As for me, in justice, I shall behold your face. I shall be filled with the vision of your glory. O Lord, hear a cause that is just. Pay heed to my as for me, in justice, I shall behold your face. I shall be filled with the vision of your glory. Turn your ear to my prayer, no deceit is on my lips. As for me, in justice, I shall behold your face, I shall be filled with the vision of your glory. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be. Word without end. Amen. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, and the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And with your spirit. And brothers and sisters, it's good to be together again on this Sunday. I want to welcome all of those who are joining us on the live stream and those in the two sides of the parish center. Uh, you'll notice we've tried to church up the space over there. You have candles, you have the uh, image of Our Lady of Guadalupe, of Divine Mercy, our cross that we use on our Good Friday services to hope to draw, you, and a new screensaver to draw you into the, uh, to the, to the mode of worship. Brethren, let us acknowledge our sins and so prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mysteries. You are sent to heal the contrite of heart. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. You came to call sinners. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. You are seated at the right hand of the Father to intercede for us. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Glory to God in the highest. And on earth, peace to people of goodwill. We praise you, we bless you, we adore you, we glorify you. We give you thanks for your great glory. Lord God, heavenly King, O God, almighty Father, Lord Jesus Christ, only begotten Son, Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. You take away the sins of the world, receive our prayer. You are seated at the right hand of the Father, have mercy on us. For you alone are the Holy One, you alone are the Lord, you alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ. With the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father, Amen. Let us pray. O God, who show the light of your truth to those who go astray, so that they may return to the right path, give all who for the faith they profess are accounted Christians the grace to reject whatever is contrary to the name of Christ and to strive after all that does it honor. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the book of the prophet Isaiah. Thus says the Lord, just as from the heavens the rain and snow come down and do not return there till they have watered the earth, making it fertile and fruitful, giving seed to the one who sows and bread to the one who eats, 
so shall my word be that goes forth from my mouth. My word shall not return to me void, but shall do my will, achieving the end for which I sent it. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The seed that falls on good ground will yield a fruitful harvest. The seed, the seed that, that falls, falls on, on good ground, ground will yield a fruitful harvest. You have visited the land and watered it. Greatly have you enriched it. God's water courses are filled. You have prepared the grain. The seed, the seed that, that falls, falls on good ground will yield a fruitful harvest. harvest. Thus have you prepared the land, drenching its furrow, furrows, breaking up its clods, softening it with showers, blessing its yield. The seed the that falls on good ground will yield, yield a fruitful, fruitful harvest. You have crowned the year with your bounty, and your paths overflow with the rich harvest. The untilled meadows overflow with it, and rejoicing clothes the hills. The seed, the seed that, that falls, falls on good, good ground will yield a fruitful harvest. The fields are garmented with flocks and the valleys blanketed with grain. They shout and sing for joy. The seed, the seed that, that falls, falls on good ground will yield a fruitful harvest. A reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Romans. Brothers and sisters, I consider that the sufferings of this present time are as nothing compared with the glory to be revealed for us. For creation awaits with eager expectation the revelation of the children of God. For creation was made subject to futility, not on its own accord, but because of the one who subjected it in hope that the creation itself would be set free from slavery to corruption and share in the glorious freedom of the children of God. We know that all creation is groaning in labor pains even until now. And not only that, but we ourselves who have the first fruits of the spirit we also groan within ourselves as we wait for adoption, the redemption of our bodies. The word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. Alleluia, alleluia. Alleluia, alleluia. The seed is the word of God. Christ is the sower. All who come to him will have life forever. Alleluia, alleluia. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Glory to you, O Lord. On that day, Jesus went out of the house and sat down by the sea. Such large crowds gathered around him that he got into a boat and sat down, and the whole crowd stood along the shore. And he spoke to them at length in parables, saying, A sower went out to sow, and as he sowed, some seed fell on the path. The birds came and ate it up. Some fell on rocky ground, where it had little soil. It sprang up at once because the soil was not deep, and when the sun rose, it was scorched and it withered for lack of roots. Some seed fell among thorns, and the thorns grew up and choked it. But some seed fell on rich soil and produced fruit, a hundred or sixty or thirtyfold. 
Whoever has ears ought to hear. The disciples approached him and said, Why do you speak to them in parables? He said to them in reply, Because knowledge of the mysteries of the kingdom of heaven have been granted to you, but to them it has not been granted. To anyone who has, more will be given, and he will grow rich. From anyone who has not, even what he has will be taken away. This is why I speak to them in parables, because they look but do not see, and hear but do not listen or understand. Isaiah's prophecy is fulfilled in them, which says, You shall indeed hear but not understand, you shall indeed look but never see. Gross is the heart of this people. They will hardly hear with their ears, they have closed their eyes, lest they see with their eyes and hear with their ears and understand with their hearts and be converted, and I heal them. But blessed are your eyes because they see, and your ears because they hear. Amen, I say to you, many prophets and righteous people long to see what you see but did not see it, and to hear what you hear but did not hear it. Hear then the parable of the sower. The seed sown on the path is the one who hears the word of the kingdom without understanding it, and the evil one comes and steals away what was sown in his heart. The seed sown on rocky ground is the one who hears the word and receives it at once with joy, but he has no root and lasts only for a time. When some tribulation or persecution comes because of the word, he immediately falls away. The seed sown among thorns is the one who hears the word, but then worldly anxiety and the lure of riches choke the word, and it bears no fruit. But the seed sown on rich soil is the one who hears the word and understands it, who indeed bears fruit and yields a hundred or sixty or thirtyfold. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise you. So why among the first apostles did 11 become great saints and one became the most infamous traitor of all time? Why among students of a poor inner city school will some kids from difficult circumstances go on to become surgeons and others go to jail? Why do some children go on to become great athletes while others with the same coaches and perhaps even more talent never make it? Now, there will be several various factors in these disparities, but one of the most basic reasons is because some people are more receptive and more responsive to coaching, to education, and to grace. Right, that coachability. And it's fitting during these summer days when we see our gardens and crops around us growing that the church in her wisdom has us consider this parable of Jesus. The seed is the word of God. And the Lord, through Isaiah, speaks of the word as the rain. And rain can penetrate the soil, so the word of God penetrates the profundity of the heart, revealing thoughts and feelings and putting it into a state of decision. A parable provokes it puts us in a state of decision. And this is why our Lord speaks in parables. Its meaning isn't obvious. In order to understand the parable, one must freely choose to listen and to be led to its meaning. Whoever has ears ought to hear. The soil is the human heart. In the Bible, as you may know, The heart is the center of the person. It's the place not primarily of feeling. It's the place of thought and of the will and of decision. It's where we exercise our freedom. And fundamentally, our freedom is the ability to open up, to be receptive and responsive, or to close ourselves off to the Lord. You know, God's word, as Isaiah proclaims, is efficacious in itself, 
but we can resist it in our freedom and render it unfruitful. Our hearts can be bad, unfruitful soil. Or we can allow him to transform our hearts into rich soil. So now that we can see from the parable that we stand in the midst of a great drama, the drama of the God of absolute love and human freedom, the seed and the soil. Our hearts, this soil is a stage upon which this drama is played out. And so today Jesus is inviting us to take a soil sample of our own hearts. What kind of soil do we have right now? He is the sower who goes out to sow. He ultimately sows himself like a grain of wheat. He sows his word, his grace, his very body and blood, all he is and has, his words and all his saving deeds. And he, and he scatters his word over the soils. And he identifies in the parable four kinds of soil, four types of the human heart. So let's unpack those for a minute. First, the heart that is a path. A path is hard, it's compact. The soil of a well-worn path is not going to cake up on your shoes when you walk on it, which is great if you're hiking. But what can grow on a path? Nothing. The ground is too hard. And so what makes our soil hard? What, what hardens our hearts? Well, in a very obvious way, sin does. Right? Sin is this resistance to God. It's a, it's a, it's a, it's a no to God. And, and sin ossifies us. It hardens us so that we're not as pliable in the Lord's hands. But the Lord doesn't leave us alone. He continues to provoke us, to call us, so that we would turn away from, from sin and turn towards him. But if we are unrepentant, if we have, and, 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 we, and, the, and we have to gaze, look at the Lord, or, ha, or worse, have him look at us, how, how does that work? Right? If, we've, if we've ever offended somebody that we love, it's hard to look them in the eye. And to look them in the eye without being, being apologetic, I have to harden myself towards that person. Right? So we, we, have the, we can do this with, with the Lord. Right? We, can, we can harden ourselves to him when he comes to us with his loving gaze. But it's not simply sin that can do this. We can have hardened attitudes, an unforgiveness somewhere a deep hurt that prevents us from trusting other people. We can have a hardened attitude of an unwillingness or fear to change, to learn new things, to be challenged out of our comfort zone to where the Lord wants to lead us. Second, the heart that's rocky ground, the soil that is rocky. This is the partial yes to the Lord. This is the yes, but. Yes, but with a condition or a limit. And here in this soil, there's a, there's a, a struggle going on for, for ultimate control. Yes, Lord, you can come in, but let me tell you how you need to act. Maybe I'll hold you at arm's length. Maybe I'll just simply keep you on the periphery. Right? I still want to be the master here. Let me pick and choose from your church what I'll believe and how I'll follow you. Don't ask too much. I like things the way they are. This is enough. But Jesus, the sower, isn't content with that. He loves us too much to stay in the, in the shallow soil, in the rocky soil, because he knows that we will ultimately wither. He didn't make us for the shallow soil. And so he provokes us. He comes us with his love to pull us out into the deeper water, into the deeper soil. Third, the heart that's choked with thorns. This soil is crowded with other things. 
other things besides the divine word. And these things are eating up all the space, all the water, all the nutrients. This kind of heart has let the world and the things of the world drown out, crowd out, and choke off the presence of God in, in the heart. And this can take in a host of forms. Too much screen time, too, being too saturated with, with, with social media, pursuing pleasure, at a, a career at the expense of one's relationship with God, pursuing power, prestige, making a name for ourselves, finding our identity in clothes or friends or possessions. Or it can simply be being just too busy with other things to pray, to attend to the Lord in our life, to serve those in need. It can be that we acquire so many possessions and surround ourselves with so many things that they take up all of our time and attention. There's not enough room in the human heart for both the thorns and the word of God. So what can we do? What can we do to clear out the thorns or to get rid of the rocks or to break open the hardness of our soil? We'll go back to the first thing I mentioned. What made the difference in, in, the, in those outcomes was being receptive and responsive. To engage the Lord and to engage him especially where there's the hardness or where there is there was rocks or where there, is, there are thorns. To engage them where we need him most. Knowing that, the, that first is always the action of God. Right? He wants us to be rich soil. He deeply desires that we become rich soil. He will do everything within his power, no matter how bad our soil is right now, to make it rich and to make it fruitful. And we do this by letting his merciful love penetrate the hard and stony ground. There are parts of our hearts that cannot be broken up on our own. And allowing his merciful love penetrate us means to pray, even to spend some time imagining his gaze to fall upon us, and to fall upon us, especially in that hard, rebellious, and stony soil in us, or that soil that is choked with so many thorns. And often how he clears the ground and breaks up the hardness is with his cross. You can imagine the cross as this enormous plow that digs deeply into the soil of our heart and starts to break it up. And if there are thorns there, to start to rip them out. And this is where we can imagine uh, the cross at work in our daily lives. Right? Where, is the, where is the Lord bringing the cross into our lives? Through just the aggravations of the day, of being frustrated in traffic or standing in a line, or being frustrated with with just all the difficulties that we're experiencing right now with this ongoing pandemic. It could be more serious things like a physical illness, perhaps the aches and pains of old age, uh, of having lost a job, right? All of that is rich opportunity for that plow of the cross to plow our hearts, to to break the hardness. And all we need to do is to engage, to be receptive, to respond to that grace. The powerful word of God, who is Jesus, working through our freedom, can transform our hearts into good, rich soil, the fourth kind of soil, the best kind of soil and how rich it can be. You know, the Lord gives us an unconditional, infallible promise of a good harvest. From Isaiah again, my word shall do my will, achieving the end for which I sent it. This is a triumphant proclamation of what he can do in our hearts. If we open up to him, he will make us fruitful. And we see it again and again 
in the lives of the saints. These men and women and children of all times of the church and all of her history, and even now in the present age. And however diverse they all are in their backgrounds or their ethnicities or in their, in their occupations, whatever it might be, they do share this one common trait, receptivity and responsiveness to the Lord. That's what makes the difference. That's what makes the saint. That's the game changer. And if we're willing to strike out into that unfamiliar territory, right, of yielding the control of our hearts, even slightly, and to engage him where there is hardness and where there are rocks and where there are thorns, he will go to work because he loves us and he wants us to be fruitful. The word has just been proclaimed to plow open our hearts, to make them ready to receive the word made flesh who will soon be present on this altar in his body and blood. In the midst of this Eucharistic sacrifice, let's decide now what kind of soil do we want in our hearts and to be responsive and open to his work. Brothers and sisters, let us profess together the apostolic faith. I believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, consubstantial with the Father, through him all things were made. For us men and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate, he suffered death and was buried, and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father, he will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Mindful of the great kindness of God the Father, we ask him to answer us with his constant help. In faith we pray. For the Pope and all the bishops and priests, that they may govern the church with God's wisdom and serve the faithful with Christ's love, we pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear our prayer that Christ may guide the minds of all civil leaders so as to promote the common good according to God's will. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That our parish will be a vibrant community of prayer, evangelization, and charitable action. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. And that the Lord will be close to the poor, the sick, the dying, the lonely, the unemployed, the addicted, and the homeless. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the souls in purgatory, that through our prayers and sacrifices they may enter into the glory of heaven. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the grace that will transform our lives into rich soil that bears abundant fruit. We pray to the Lord. 
Loving Father, let us see your kindness. Grant us your salvation through Christ our Lord. Pray, brethren, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and the good of all his holy church. Look upon the offerings of the church, O Lord, as she makes her prayer to you, and grant that when consumed by those who believe, they may bring ever greater holiness through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with, with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is, it is right, right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God. For you so loved the world that in your mercy you sent us the Redeemer to live like us in all things but sin, so that you might love in us what you loved in your Son by whose obedience we have been restored to those gifts of yours that by sinning we had lost in disobedience. And so, Lord, with all the angels and saints, we too give you thanks as an exaltation we acclaim.
You are indeed holy, O Lord, and all you have created rightly gives you praise. For through your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, by the power and working of the Holy Spirit, you give life to all things and make them holy. And you never cease to gather a people to yourself, so that from the rising of the sun to its setting, a pure sacrifice may be offered to your name. Therefore, O Lord, we humbly implore you, by the same Spirit, graciously make holy these gifts we have brought to you for consecration, that they may become the body and blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, at whose command we celebrate these mysteries. For on the night he was betrayed, he himself took bread, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. We proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. Therefore, O Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the saving passion of your Son, his wondrous resurrection and ascension to heaven, and as we look forward to his second coming, we offer you in thanksgiving this holy and living sacrifice. Look, we pray, upon the oblation of your church, and recognizing the sacrificial victim by whose death he will to reconcile us to yourself. Grant that we who are nourished by the body and blood of your Son and filled with this Holy Spirit may become one body, one spirit in Christ. May he make of us an eternal offering to you so that we may obtain an inheritance with your elect, especially with the most blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, with your blessed apostles and glorious martyrs, and with all the saints on whose constant intercession in your presence we rely for unfailing help. May the sacrifice of our reconciliation, we pray, O Lord, advance the peace and salvation of all the world. Be pleased to confirm in faith and charity your pilgrim church on earth with your servant Francis, our Pope, and Alexander, our Bishop, Peter, his assistant, the order of bishops, all the clergy, and the entire people you have gained for your own. Listen graciously to the prayers of this family whom you have summoned before you. In your compassionate, and merciful Father, gather to yourself all your children scattered throughout the world. To our departed brothers and sisters, and to all who are pleasing to you at their passing from this life, give kind admittance to your kingdom. There we hope to enjoy forever the fullness of your glory, through Christ our Lord, through whom you bestow on the world all that is good. Through him and with him and in him, O God, almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. At the Savior's command, informed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. 
Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Lamb of God, you, you take, take away, away the, the sins, sins of the world. world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed.
preferred to the dwellings of the wicked. Blessed are they who dwell in your hearts, forever singing your praise. For the Lord God is our son, our shield. The Lord will give us his favor and glory. He will not withhold any good to those who walk without faith. Blessed are they who dwell in your hearts forever singing your praise. O Lord of hosts, how blessed is the man who trusts in you. Blessed are they who dwell in your hearts, forever singing your praise. The sparrow finds a home, and the swallow a nest for her young. By your altars, O Lord of hosts, my King and my God, Blessed are they who dwell in your hearts, forever singing your praise. How lovely is your dwelling place, O Lord of hosts. My soul is longing and yearning for the courts of the Lord. My heart and my flesh cry out to the living God. Blessed are they who dwell in your hearts forever singing your praise. Whoever eats my flesh and drinks my blood, remains in me, and I in him, says the Lord. Blessed are those whose way is blameless, who walk in the law of the Lord. Blessed are those who keep his decrees, with all their hearts they see. Whoever eats my flesh and drinks my blood remains in me, and I in him, says the Lord. I treasure your word in my heart, lest I sin against you. Whoever eats my flesh and drinks my blood remains in me, and I in him, says the Lord. Remember your word to your servant, by which you made me whole. This is my comfort in sorrow, that your promise gives me love. Whoever eats my flesh, and drinks my blood, remains in me, and I in him, says the Lord. The law from your mouth means more to me than large quantities of silver and gold. How sweet is the promise to my tongue, more than honey in the mouth. Whoever eats my flesh and drinks my blood remains in me, and I in him, says the Lord. Your word is a lamp for my feet and a light for my path. I rejoice at your 
Let us pray. Having consumed these gifts, we pray, O Lord, that by our participation in this mystery, its saving effects upon us may grow. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Just a reminder to everyone to please continue to check our homepage at ctk.cc for all of our latest announcements and events. Uh, the, uh, our online sign-up seems to be going pretty well. There's a couple things to maybe highlight. One is, is that uh, uh, Edward Atkinson has started to release this series of video clips on sacred music. The second one was just released this, this last week. I encourage us all to go watch it. It's uh, very well done and very informative. And, and uh, along with that, next Tuesday for our Tuesday talk on our Facebook Live will be a conversation of myself uh, Edward and Julian Durko uh, about sacred music uh, and so we could take questions and, and talk through some of those things uh, those of how we're doing sacred music here in, in Christ the King Parish and also in the in the church at large. Um, also we are beginning we're going to have coming up a, a Marian consecration our annual Marian consecration led by Linda Maynard. There's a table in the back of the church to, to, to get some more information and there will be stuff that will be going out in through uh, Facebook and our e-bulletin. So stay tuned and love if you haven't made a Marian consecration, it's a wonderful thing to do. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. May Almighty God bless you, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go forth, the Mass is ended. Thanks be to God. St. Michael the Archangel, defend us in battle. Be our defense against the wickedness and snares of the devil. May God rebuke him, we humbly pray. And do thou, O Prince of the Heavenly Hosts, by the power of God, thrust into hell Satan and all the evil spirits who prowl about the world seeking the ruin of souls. Amen. <laughs> I sing the mighty power of God that made the mountains rise, that spread the flowing seas abroad, that built the lofty skies. I sing the wisdom that ordained the sun to rule the day. The moon shines full at his command. And all the stars obey. I sing the goodness of the Lord that built the earth. 